the hearing is important for the United States Congress to shape the United States approach, resourcing, and goals in East Asia and the Pacific Islands. The Biden administration has correctly identified the People's Republic of China as the only competitor with both the intent to reshape the international order and the economic, diplomatic, military, and technological power to do it. The October 2022 National Security Strategy further says that Beijing has ambitions to create an enhanced sphere of influence in the Indo-Pacific. Yet, despite this recognition, we're still woefully underperforming in the Indo-Pacific, and we are not competing with the PRC from a position of strength. East Asia and the Pacific Islands are on the front lines of our competition with China, and yet EAP remains a small fraction of the State Department's overall budget and programming. And instead of pursuing competitive actions against the PRC, we are chasing Chinese Communist Party officials for fruitless engagements. The PRC presents a significant threat to the well-being and prosperity of key U.S. allies and partners in the, in the Pacific. None understand this reality better than Taiwan. While Congress has signed off on multiple arms sales to support Taiwan and enhance its defense, there still remains approximately $19 billion backlog in weapons deliveries. So my Arms Export Delivery Solutions Act was passed in last year's NDAA, yet the report we received from your department earlier this year did not clearly lay out a description of the actions the United States is taking to expedite deliveries of defense articles and services to Taiwan including whether we will provide an interim capability or solution, which I explicitly ask for in that bill. We must ensure we're doing all that we can now to bolster Taiwan's defense against an increasingly against aggressive PRC. It is clear our allies in the Pacific share our concern about the PRC's growing aggression towards Taiwan. When I travel with Chairman McCall, to Northeast uh, East Asia earlier this year, we heard the same thing from all of our allies, that Ukraine today could be Taiwan tomorrow, and that US leadership is key to bringing democratic countries together in the fight against authoritarianism. Our allies and partners are also worried about the growing use of economic coercion. Last month, I held a roundtable with the ambassadors from South Korea and Japan where we discussed how we could work together to combat economic coercion. The United States in the Pacific economic framework is not enough to meet the growing trade and investment needs in the region, and I was disappointed to hear that the Biden administration was not interested in pursuing free trade or investment deals with our partners. We must have a concrete economic agenda in Asia to be competitive in the region. Nowhere is this more true than in Southeast Asia, which has immense economic potential. So I look forward to traveling to the region next month to discuss security, economic, energy, and human rights cooperation. Finally, we all agree that we are in an era of strategic competition with China and that this competition requires a whole government, whole of government approach. Yet I am worried about the growing trend of the State Department not being forthcoming with information about its engagement with the PRC or actions taken by the PRC that directly affect United States national security such as the spy balloon and the spy base in Cuba. In June, I sent a letter noting concern about your trip to Beijing on the anniversary of Tiananmen. I'm also disappointed that this hearing, originally scheduled for June, was pushed due to Secretary Blinken's travel to Beijing, which the department itself admitted would not be a game changer. I have also sent letters about getting briefings about the spy balloon and spy base in Cuba. We cannot pull together a whole of government approach to combat growing PRC aggression if the State Department refuses to engage with Congress and the American people in a timely manner. In short, 
The Indo-Pacific region is critical to U.S. national security and competition with PRC, so we must do more with our allies and partners, especially economically, to maintain U.S. leadership in the region. And to properly compete with China, the United States government must be in lockstep in communicating openly across branches about the threat the PRC presence, rather than prioritizing fruitless engagement with our counterparts in Beijing. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses and members of the subcommittee on these important issues. 